Hi, this is Ryan Smith from the Physics Department at CSU East Bay. Uh, I'm here to talk about uh, an issue that has come up in our uh, uh, Python-related classes, where we are using Python notebooks, um, but to, in order to get there, we often need to, uh, after we've installed Anaconda, uh, which uh, installs several packages as well, uh, we usually click on the navigator, which takes some time to load up. You can see that it's loading down here at the bottom. And then when it loads, we will actually open up the Jupyter Notebook app. And so all this takes time. And then not only when you, when, when you have opened it, uh, then you, once you've, if you have actually opened it, you still need to click on Launch in here. And then once you've launched, it opens up a uh, terminal window where it has some commands. <coughs> and then finally, a web browser is opened, but <laughs> catch is that you ne now need to navigate to the place where you actually have your Python file. So some of us, including myself, find this to be a little bit annoying. And so here's finally now opening up a Python notebook. Um, so I want to talk about a different way to go about doing this where you don't need to use the Anaconda Navigator. And uh, so in order to do that, I will offer a, a solution. There's probably several solutions out there. Um, but uh, if we look at this uh, beginner's guide here at 3.1.2, we can see that uh, we should go into terminal, we should cd to the uh, working directory where we want to, to have our, our uh, uh, files, and we'll type in Jupyter Notebook. So we're basically going to make a shell that does that, um, and I'll show you how to do that both in um, a, uh, a text editor uh, in terminal, as well as uh, using something called Xcode, which you can download freely from the internet. So, um, so let's see, I think I'll, I'll start by just uh, uh, going through the, the, the steps that I've laid out also in um, a, a PDF, which I'm also putting up online. I'll try to make sure that I link to that. I put it on my GitHub. And um, first thing we need to do is figure out, well, where is this thing exactly? So I'm going to go ahead and close out of this, and I'm going to open up a new terminal window here. And this is, may seem a little bit cumbersome, but we're only going to do it once. Uh, I'm going to CD into the Google Drive. Notice how I use um, quotes here, because uh, this is actually a has some spaces in there. We don't want uh, CD to have, see any spaces. So again, I'm going to CD into courses. CD, uh, I'm going to figure out where I am. Okay, so I want to go into this folder here. You can see I've got a lot of nested folders here, right? And that's not really that pleasant if I wanted to do all this through uh, the terminal every single time. So we're going to try to make our life easier. And, um, okay, so let's see here. I'm going to go into the next folder. Just bear with me for a moment. And, and then finally, I'm going to go into Python Notebooks. Okay, this is where I have all my... Um, uh, file stored. So you can see I have an IPython notebook in here, for example. And um, so this, I'm now I'm going to print my working directory. That's PWD. And the output of that is important for us. We're going to copy that. That's that's the that's the key stuff. So uh, one thing that I can do, for example, is to open up uh, Nano and I can create, let's say, I'm going to call this a Jupyter-EM. Okay. And uh, that'll be uh, .sh for a shell. Go ahead and open that. And what we're going to do inside of here is cd uh, this uh, this directory, and then Jupyter Notebook. Okay, and that's it. And, um, so I, I cd'd into the folder that I'm interested in with single quotes. Next line, Jupyter Notebook. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and exit out of that. Save the buffer. Go ahead and write that name. Okay. The next thing that we need to do is we need to ch mod this. Um, uh, uh, this file here, uh, we need to modify the uh, permissions so that we can actually execute it in terminal. So uh, one way that we can do this is chmod plus x to make it executable, and then the name of this um, uh, shell here. So there it is, jupyter-em shell, and I'm going to modify it to be executable, and I can do ls-l um, of jupyter-em, there we go, and you can see here that there's some X's in here. I won't explain all these at the moment, but these X, X, and X means that myself and everybody else can also execute these things. So now we're ready to go. I need to find this thing on the desktop. Um, so I'm going to look around here, and um, I'm not seeing it immediately. Let's see, where where did it 
Who did it run off to? Oh, um, you know what? I actually created it in the working directory, so I need to actually go there real quick. I was meaning to just create this in um, on the desktop, but I actually ended up creating it in the folder. Um, in Python notebooks. Okay, here it is. I'm, I meant to create that um, at the desktop, so um, that's one way to go about doing it. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and open this with Oops. I'm going to go ahead and open this. Seems to be thinking, okay. And I'm going to enable all applications, always open with, go down to utilities, and I'm going to open it with terminal. Okay, so I'm going to always open it with terminal. Here I am opening it, which ran the command line. And in just a moment, we should have a uh, web browser that's opening. Um, probably it should be this uh, Google Chrome, since that's my default browser. And here it is. And we're already in the folder that we want. And uh, I can click, for example, on this. And then we're ready to go. Now, the disadvantage to, uh, to making my um, uh, working directory so restricted is that home is, is the root directory now. So if I have, if I wanted to go up and over, if I wanted to go back into parent directories and go to another uh, 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 file or another folder, um, this is going to be a little bit of a problem. So um, one thing that I might consider doing is get myself to the, the parent directory where I might then uh, be storing some of my uh, files and folders. So something to consider. Um, this video is essentially finished now, um, but I wanted to then give an alternative in case you don't like uh, using Emacs or Nano um, within the terminal uh, for uh, creating uh, text files, or if that's something that's unfamiliar to you. So uh, if that is the case, you can uh, download Xcode, in which case I'll go to File, 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 okay, there we go, and um, File, File, and then uh, we'll create a new file and you, it'll probably start you up here but you can scroll all the way down to the bottom and we're going to create a shell script. Okay, so I'll start this shell script and um, here on the desktop so I might call this ENM Jupyter just that has a different name and um, then again I'm basically just going to copy and paste that exact same information here so um, so let's see here I'm going to say uh, where did it go? There it is. Okay, so I'm just going to kind of, oops, open this. Okay, so this is essentially the the text that we want to put in here, and I'm just going to go ahead and copy and paste that into here, and then I would need to do exactly the same things here, where I would go, um, let's do a cd tilde, ls cd desktop. Okay, and now you can see that uh, I've got my um, em jump that I created here, uh, so I can do ch mod plus x um, of this uh, em jump dot sh. Okay, so now we're ready to go, and all I need to do now at this point is I need to open it again with the terminal. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Now do utilities, all applications, always open with terminal. Go ahead. Okay, and again, the same exact thing happens here. I've opened up another instance here. So actually, I've opened up now two kernels. So I can, ha I can have multiple kernels running at the same time. That's okay. But now you can see that I have another instance running where I can run uh, Jupyter Notebooks. Okay. So you can either uh, close out of these things by uh, hitting X and then just say terminate, or here's my other instance here. Uh, so it, that uh, didn't like it very well, so maybe, maybe better is to close from, uh, from the web browser first. Um, and then the other you can do is control C and then uh, you can hit control C again and then it shuts down all kernels. Um, maybe it's better to first save in your web browser first before shutting down kernels. Um, I think that's it. Uh, you know, another thing that just might make things, you know, kind of uh, more like nicer looking for you is if you uh, just, for example, uh, type in uh, Jupyter in your um, web browser and you go under searching for images. Um, you can find something that looks pretty like this. Um, yeah, so let's go ahead and copy this uh, image here. And if we go to this uh, uh, get info, um, so I can actually change the uh, get info here. 
Um, by the way, also, if you started as a text file, you could always change uh, the extension here like this. Uh, nonetheless, uh, it can click on this um, icon up here, go to uh, edit, I believe, and then paste. And then look, it looks pretty now. So I can go ahead and now it looks like I'm kind of a little bit more professional thing. And you can remember that um, just visually where, where this is. And then when you double click on this, that will be opening up your um, Python notebook in your preferred working directory. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, please leave comments uh, if it's helpful for you. And um, I will uh, also try to make a video uh, for the Windows version. Actually, it turns out that the Windows version is even easier, where we'll just be making a batch file in there. Thanks a lot.